scare you too much into what being an entrepreneur is all about, but um, I'm just going to share with you um, my sort of entrepreneurial story and um, my top tips for um, being an entrepreneur. Um, so um, I've actually um, got a degree in engineering and I'm a chartered accountant, so I'm probably not your typical entrepreneurial stock, you know, not too much flair of entrepreneurial going on in, in accountancy, but um, I always wanted to start my own business um, right from, you know, when I was at school. And um, when I uh, qualified as a, a chartered accountant, um, I, I was a bit fed up then by the corporate world and thought, you know, I want to start my own business. So um, I looked around for what I wanted to do. And um, at the time, I was spending a lot of time in London working, um, and it was about the time when the sort of nail bar um, kind of concept came up, you know, where you could go and you could get a manicure in your lunch hour. Um, and there was absolutely nothing like that in Edinburgh. Um, so I thought, oh, this would be a great idea. So, um, you know, so, um, but I, I quite like getting um, facials and massage and things. So I thought, well, let's just extend the concept to all of beauty. So, um, you know, it's basically a place where you can come, you can get a treatment, it's when you want it, fit in with your lifestyle, which suited me because, you know, I was working 80 hours a week as an accountant, so <laughs> I didn't get much of a life. Um, so, it all started off quite well. Um, just to sort of spice things up, I decided to start a family at the same time. So, um, you know, just just to add to the to the, the mix. Um, so I wrote my business plan, you know, obviously being an accountant, it was, you know, 80 pages long and, you know, in very much depth. Um, went to get funding when I was about eight months pregnant, so I got a few kind of odd stares with that one, but um, managed to get my funding. Um, you know, all going quite well. Found a premises in Lothian Road in Edinburgh, great spot for my target market, which was essentially professional women, you know, urban lifestyle. Um, so all going well, got a uh, um, company in to do my project management, design the shop fit, um, got a shop fit contractor, so, you know, all going swimmingly, and then basically disaster struck. Um, so I would signed into a 15-year lease, so signed away my home, my life, you know, my children. Um, and <laughs> about a week before um, we were due to start the shop fit, the shop fit contract to pull out and um, so that was it that was a blow um, my project management company said don't worry you know we'll get other people um, then they started being a bit odd you know it was like can you pay us and we'll pay them and I was like that I don't, why <laughs> why am I doing that? Um, and it turned out they were trying to rip me off by adding basically 20% onto every contract cost that I was paying. Um, and at which point I just thought, I can't work like this. I can't trust these people. So I sacked them. And I was left with basically half a shop fit, 20 grand of my budget gone and no way of finishing my salon that signed into a 15-year lease on my home and with my children sold. <laughs> so what do you do when you're <laughs> faced with complete and utter disaster? Um, so I got on the phone to my dad and said, Dad, <laughs> help, um, I'm in trouble. And my dad's a carpenter, so... Um, Bless him. He came all the way up from Norwich, which is like 450 miles away. He's, he stayed at my house for two months and helped me um, finish the shop fit. We worked basically 20 hours a day, seven days a week for two and a half months, solid. And at the end of it, I had a lovely salon. My dad does a good job. So it looked amazing and I was so pleased with it. But in the meantime, I had dropped the ball on everything else to do with running a business. And I basically, I had staff, well, I had six staff, manager, all of that, lovely salon, lovely product, no customers. So <laughs> when I thought, I've just spent the last two and a half months working 24-7, my job just started. 
So I then spent the next six months basically trogging the streets of Edinburgh to try and drum up business. I did absolutely everything that you can think of. I went into businesses, I hand delivered 10,000 leaflets in Edinburgh, and if anyone's done leaflet <laughs> delivery, it is not a fun job in Edinburgh. Um, lots of tenement stairs. And um, yeah, I did everything that I could think of because there was nothing else for me to do. I had to get to make the business a success. Um, so it started off really quite poorly. You know, we took like 40 quid in our first day or something, um, which is a bit scary when you've got six staff to pay their wages at the end of every month. You know, at the end of every month, I'm thinking, please let there be enough money in the bank to pay the payroll. Um, and we lasted like that for a while. Um, and then we had Christmas and we, you know, we sold a lot of gift vouchers, so that was good. And that gave us people coming back in the following year. You know, and the team did a great job. You know, they built up their regular clients and we kind of got going. And then um, I had a friend who um, worked for the landlord at Ocean Terminal in Edinburgh. And they said, oh, would you fancy opening a nail bar at Ocean Terminal? And I thought, well, not really, but um, I would like to open a spa. So um, because I felt that our concept of sort of this convenient sort of you know, luxury and personalized service could work really well in a spa environment as well as beauty. So um, we, you know, talked to them and we ended up um, taking on a 4,000 square foot unit in Ocean Terminal, which was about four times the size of my loading road salon. Um, and we opened an Ocean Terminal, so that was great. Went really well. Got approached to go into Silverburn in Glasgow. Same concept. So we looked at that and thought, yes, this would be good. Um, opened there. And then we got approached to go into Aberdeen. Um, so we looked at that and thought, yeah, this is, this is a good market for us. And we opened, we opened in Aberdeen. Um, and we opened in Aberdeen in 2010. So um, we've been going about eight years then. And so I'd started off with six staff. I then, at that point, um, you know, we'd started off from zero. We were turning over at that point about a million pounds a year. So really good. Um, had about 65 staff. Um, and really what I actually had was four locations that were the same company, but they all kind of operated in their own little way, you know, nothing was consistent, you know, and it started all getting very difficult because when you've got 65 staff working in three different cities and, you know, you end up being spread very thin. Um, so I spent the next couple of years sort of putting in kind of group structures, management structures, all the kind of um, head office, you know, HR, finance, sales and marketing, which I probably should have had at the start, really, but, um, you know, I did it kind of the wrong way around. And, um, you know, we did all of that, and then I kind of spent a lot of time looking at, well, actually, you know, I've grown it to this much, but, you know, where, where, do, we, where do I want to go? You know, I had no strategy, basically, for the business at all. Um, you know, our expansion had come because of people approaching us, not us going out and, and saying, this is where we want to be. Um, so I spent quite a lot of time thinking about, really, why do we exist as, a, as, a, as an organization? And the reason why we essentially exist is to make people happy. Um, you know, our clients come to us and it doesn't really matter if they come in for a 10 minute eyebrow wax or, you know, a whole full day spa day, you know, they're coming to go away feeling good about themselves. And um, when you really understand deeply what your product is, you then understand how you can grow it and where, where you can take your company. And so um, we now have a, um, you know, a really defined vision and strategy for the business that I've shared with the team, um, and we all walk, you know, work towards the same goals. Um, so, you know, last year we turned over um, 2.3 million. Um, so we've grown a lot in the last sort of four or five years, and um, you know, we're hoping to open about 25 locations in the next three years in the UK. But the ultimate aim is to go global. Um, this year, we're launching a product range in a couple of months' time. I'm looking at three locations in London just now, um, and we're, we're hoping to expand down south. So um, it's all good. Um, 
but if you'd asked me at the beginning of when I started the business, you know, uh, you know, are you, are you enjoying being an entrepreneur? I just said to you, no, I hate it. You know, it's the worst job in the world. You know, um, ev everything that went wrong could go wrong. Um, if you ask me now, I would say, yes, it's the best job. I leap out of bed every morning going, I love my job. Um, because, you know, that buzz of something when it becomes successful and, and, and the buzz of seeing other people get behind it as well is just, um, you know, it's just priceless. It's priceless. And um, yeah, so my top tips for um, being an entrepreneur, I think, um, have a vision um, and a plan. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get there, but if you don't have a plan, you definitely won't. Um, I think you have to be determined in the face of adversity. Um, and you have to have the confidence in yourself that you will just deal with whatever is thrown at you. And, you know, you just have to get on with it. Um, I think part of being an entrepreneur is about thinking. Um, that's the hard bit. Um, you can't do it in an office where you've got six people chopping at your ear and, you, you know, your phone's constantly going, you've got a to-do list as long as your arm. But um, I spend a lot of time trying to get away from that so that I can actually clear my head and think about where we're going. Um, I think that you have to make things happen. Um, no is not a word in my vocabulary. My team will know if I set my heart on something, it will happen, and I don't stop until it does, um, which sounds a little bit scary, but, um, you know, but if you don't, if you accept what you're told, you won't get on. You need to go out and drive it yourself. Um, and my other thing is, I think you have to trust your gut. I'm a great believer in what will be, will be, which I know is a little bit different from, and maybe a little bit contradictory to go out and make things happen, but, you know, you can't control other people and you can't control every situation, um, and you have to be flexible enough to adapt and, and just trust that, um, you know, if something doesn't happen quite in the way that you planned, it's because something better is coming around the corner. So, and that's always a better thing. So, uh, that's my top tips, and I wish you all really the best of luck in, hope you all go out and um, become entrepreneurs, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Becky. Um, lots of echoes there. I think, interestingly, uh, an engineering accountant, not your typical entrepreneur. I've yet to meet a typical entrepreneur. <laughs> they all come from yeah. very different places. Um, and that whole thing about, about resilience in the face of when things don't quite go the way you wanted them to. And mm -hmm. now I'm going to do that thing where, I, remember I told you I was going to get unhappy with you. Does anyone have any questions for Becky? We have some roving mics here for anyone that's got a question. I've got yeah. one at the back I, there. Hi. I just wanted to say, ask, um, so you said you started off with one salon, then it went to three, and now you're planning to open 25, which is uh -huh. obviously quite a big jump. Do you have like an end point where you think that'll finish, or do you want to just keep going as um, long as it's successful? We want to be global. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not, I don't really have an, an end point. I mean, we've got six now. Um, so... Yeah, um, not at the minute, no. <laughs> Anything else? Oh. Is there a point at the beginning where you're just like, I can't do it anymore, I gotta stop, I need a break, or you just want to give up completely? Um, what was your motivation to give up? I think. I actually, no, I've, I've never had that. No, I think a lot of it, is, yeah, well, I suppose, yeah, sometimes, but, but momentarily, because at the end of the day, I think, you know, <coughs> I've created something that's come from my head. You know, to, you know, I started the business 
13 years ago, it was a thought in my head. Now I employ, you know, 105 people and in six locations in three cities, you know, that just blows my mind. <laughs> you know, that the, the, the thought in your head can turn into this, you know, thing that everyone believes in. You know, we serve 5,000 clients a month. That just blows my mind. And, and so when I, when I get, you know, a bit down, oh, you know, because we all do. I just think, no, nah, you know, it's, it's a good, you know, what I've done is, is good. I'm pleased with it. I'm proud of it, so. Hi. Hi. Um, so um, my question is, how did you know that this is what you wanted to do? I mean, there are so many ideas out there. So what was the confirmation that said, okay, that's what I want to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I asked myself the same question. <laughs> um, I don't know really. I think, I think it's to do with um, having the freedom to, to be the master of your own destiny. You know, it's, it's to do with I'm only as good as me myself. Um, and, but, but that really challenges me, you know, and I'm, I really, you know, that really motivates me. Um, and I just, I don't, I, I think it's just the way that you work, you know, I, 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 I tried the corporate thing and it, it just it bored me to tears, to be honest, you know, I just couldn't stand being in an office with, you know, sucking up to the boss and, um, you know, all the office politics and stuff, you know, it's just, I think it's, it's a, a personal thing, I think it just comes from within, you know, how you feel. I have a question. Oh, any more? Yes, one down here. Oh, we'll just get out, wait for the mic. That way the people at the back can hear. Oh, sorry, there's someone else. Thank you. Um, You'll be next. <laughs> now that you've opened so many saloons, um, if you could speak to yourself when you, before you open your first one, what two or three advices would you give yourself? Or what two or three things that you find the most challenging in opening your first one that you will then later learn that was easier once you had the experience? Or? Um, I think... I think I'd probably say, um, well, double your, double your um, startup budget. <laughs> I think I'm always underestimate. I think I always sort of overestimate what I can do versus what I should be paying other people to do. Really, um, you know. So I probably, I probably create more problems myself than I would, you know, getting an expert in to help me, sort of thing. Um, that would probably be the main, the main one, because now I just think, well, I've, I've done everything now. So I know that if something comes along that I don't know, I'll, I'll know how to deal with it, because I'll just work out how to deal with it, if you know what I mean. It, it, so I think, I think there's a bit of thing about confidence in yourself. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, ha I have a lot more confidence in my ability now, because I've, I've got that experience, whereas when I was starting out, I didn't have that confidence, and that probably held me back a little bit. Thank you. And there was one at the back there, yes. Okay. So I have a question. Um, so I wonder, the product that you're offering here, how does it differ from other spas? Um, I'm just wondering, um, so what gap did you find in the market? Yeah, so um, we, we really focus on, um, well, number one is accessibility, and that's how, you know, we've, we've had from when we, we first started, and it's really, you know, it's a number of things about, you know, convenience. We open seven days a week, early till late, and it's about fitting it into your lifestyle. Um, we say we're inclusive, not exclusive. I mean, most spas will say they're luxury, exclusive spas, and I think they put off half their customer base because they're a little bit intimidating. So we go out of our way to try and be accessible to all. And, you know, and that, that really is our concept. Um, and the other thing that's very key to us is the personal service aspect. So we treat our clients when they come in our door for what they want, not say to them, here's our treatment list and you have to have one of these. So um, a lot of product brands will dictate their treatments. Um, so like, you know, if you go and have a Clarins facial at one place, you'll have the exact same facial, no matter what, anywhere. Um, and we don't do that. We, um, we treat the client who comes to the door. So we have a pure facial, 
but, but they, will, they will tailor that to what your needs are. Um, so, so we've kind of differentiated ourselves in that way. It's harder to do because it, it requires a lot more training. Um, but I think it, it, it's a much better quality of service for the client. So. Okay, we have a question over here. Um, my question is, um, what advice would you give for mothers that are starting businesses? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, it's, um, I think it's one of the best jobs, actually, to fit around being a mum. Um, I mean, I've got two children, and I mean, I mean, I, my my first, uh, my son Morgan was, um, he was a baby when when I started the business, and I literally used to carry him around in his car seat. So if you had a meeting with me, right, I came with my baby. You know, that that was it. That that was that, and and um, but but I could do that because you know that was just the accepted, you know, if you want to meet with me, that's how it is. Um, but you can't always do that in a workplace. And um, the other thing that I am a real great um, believer in is the whole flexible working. So I don't have a fixed working pattern, and I don't have a fixed working pattern for our staff either. I mean, uh, they do in certain circumstances, because we open, you know, seven days a week, so we have rotors. Um, you know, we have shift patterns, but in terms of being flexible, you know, it doesn't matter who we have on each shift, you know, so, and, and we try and flex as much as we can, because I actually think that, um, you know, it's perfectly possible to, to have a great company, really profitable, and work it around your, your life. Um, you know, business is personal. I, I just, I hate this whole, um, you know, oh, your business life is over here and your personal life is over here. And I'm like, well, no, not really, because you're here and you're here. <laughs> so and you're the same person. So, um, you know, I just think it's, I think there needs to be more um, encouragement of, of particularly mums.